Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, anything we're speaking about here today on the program, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. You can order Longevity products right off the website or Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Healthy Start Pack, OsteoFX, Sweeties, and Ultimate Niacin, and Ultimate Selenium if you're dealing with blood sugar problems. They're all up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. Start a Longevity business. Work out, of, work out of your home, get your products at the wholesale price, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and best of all, help change the world with the power of nutrition. If you've, if you've experienced the power of nutritional supplementation and of the lifestyle recommendations we make here on this program and in the longevity business, and you want to share the word, spread the word, and make money at the same time for a one-time $25 fee, you can have your own longevity business. Call 866-735-2470 or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And then I'd also like to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products. If you're dealing with blemished skin or accelerated aging or you want to prevent aging of the skin, nothing beats retinol for thickening the skin, for reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, and for helping clear up blemish-prone skin, retinol 5 percent gel or truth retinol 5 percent gel is made with vitamin c and never any preservatives fragrances fillers waxes oils water silicon emulsifiers surfactants nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our truth skin health products all one hat 100 percent active and functional ingredients in our truth balm truth serum which by the way was voted one of the top 150 products in the world by harper's bazaar magazine truth serum truth balm truth omega-6 healing cream and truth retinol 5 percent gel are all up at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay continuing on with our brain chemical dopamine the reward chemical dopamine the we just won the powerball brain chemical which we will very understandably do anything to stimulate dopamine is said to be our reward chemical it's associated with getting a reward it's also associated with anticipation of reward and pretty much anything that we're obsessed with or addicted to somehow involves dopamine smoking drinking eating taking drugs gambling Pretty much anything that we're obsessed about. In fact, even OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, hand washing, obsessive hand washing, obsessive uh, turning the oven off or checking that you turn the oven off. There's all kinds of ways that this OCD can show up. Fear of germs, fear of being contaminated by germs, excessive focus on religion or excessive focus on morality, focus of lose, a fear of losing something that you might need. All of these are examples of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. 
There's really not much you could do if you have OCD from a pharmacological standpoint, but we do attempt to self-medicate, and anything that we do, uh, OCD itself, is one of the ways that we're self-medicating for dopamine, one of the ways that we're jack attempting to jack up our dopamine levels. Pretty much anything we're hooked on somehow involves this hormone dopamine, but there's healthy ways to make your brain think it just won the lottery. There's healthy ways to hit your dopamine button. As we said, micro goals can amp up or enhance dopamine levels in the brain. Achieving micro goals, th that's why it's so important to write down everything uh, everything you want, big goals and little goals, Doing a, having a to-do list, going to the store, putting gas in the car. Once you accomplish these micro goals, especially if you've written them down, you're gonna get a big hit of this reward chemical. Dopamine, as we've said, is involved in movement disorders. They give you dopamine if you have Parkinson's disease as a drug in the form of a, a medication called Cinemet. Without dopamine, you can't make smooth movements. So movement, moving your body, getting on a rebounder, exercise, these are all great ways to upregulate your dopamine. Learning new things, excitement, adventure, enhance dopamine. Of course, so do drugs, cocaine, methamphetamine, caffeine, Adderall, Ritalin, pain pills, sugar. All of these are ways that we can, act, uh, are ways that we attempt anyway to upregulate our dopamine, even if we have to pay the price. We overeat, we abuse food because our minds aren't being stimulated in an ordinary healthy way because our, dopamines, our dopamine secretion system is not being stimulated in an ordinary healthy way. We eat because we're not living our lives as an adventure. Helen Keller said life is either a great adventure or it's nothing at all. She could have said life is either a great adventure or it's an all-day meal. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet. Life is either a great adventure or it's an all-you-can-eat buffet or it's a bag of potato chips or a donut or a Snickers bar. For many of us, that's how we're attempting to duplicate the, bra the brain chemistry that's associated with having a great, fulfilling life without, without, have, uh, uh, without having a life like uh, where we maximize adventure and excitement. We're going to go for the food. We're going to go for the buffet. That's what That really at, is at the root of our overeating epidemic. It's so easy to overeat. We're encouraged to overeat. So if we're missing something in our lives, it's very easy to redirect what we're missing, what we're missing to food. And that's what most of us do. Eating is like a, a replacement for dopamine-enhancing activities, a weak replacement for dopamine-enhancing activities that can really improve the quality of our lives. If we pay attention to our lives, if we live our lives consciously, if we live our lives mindfully, we'll be upregulating dopamine the way it's supposed to be upregulated. And if we pay attention to what we ingest, we can also bump up our dopamine levels. Probiotic-rich foods can upregulate dopamine. A healthy microbiome, a healthy gut bacteria, gut bacterial universe in the intestine has been shown to upregulate dopamine levels. So eating fermented foods, making sure that you're using prebiotics like fiber that support probiotics can help upregulate dopamine levels. Green tea, we've been talking about green tea now for a couple of weeks. Green tea will raise dopamine levels. Yet another reason to sip on green tea all day long. Ripe bananas have dopamine in them. Sunflower seeds have dopamine in them. Foods that contain the amino acid tyrosine, which I absolutely love. Tyrosine is turned into dopamine in the brain. Tyrosine is a, uh, if you're worried about movement disorders or Parkinson's disease, tyrosine may be a way to prevent Parkinson's disease. You can get tyrosine pretty cheaply at any health food store. Tyrosine is found in high-protein foods and meat, cheese, eggs, dairy, seafood. You can use uh, tyrosine supplements, 100 milligrams a day, 200 milligrams a day. If you use too much, you might get a little bit jittery, but if you use just enough, tyrosine is like caffeine. It'll give you a, a little buzz, plus it'll upregulate your dopamine levels. We need to start looking at those who would manipulate our built-in eating drives for their bottom lines and to hell with the consumers who have to eat the food as enemies. They're not our friends. McDonald's is not our friends. We don't need a war on cancer or a war on drugs. We need a war on McDonald's. We need a war on corporate interests that could care less about the consumers that's, that, that consume their product and more about their bottom line. McDonald's, Nabisco, Keebler, Nestle, Kellogg's, they're not just corporations and they're not friendly and they're not benign. They're the enemy and they need to be regarded as such. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 Okay, we are.
are back on the bright side. Thanks for joining us, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Have uh, six years, almost a little over six years of archives at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Search engine, search engines are up. If you miss a program, you can search for specific topics, or if you have a customer, client, or friend, or loved one, and you want to redirect them or you want to direct them to one of our programs, go to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com and check out our search engine and all of the archives. You can also purchase longevity products at brightside. Ben.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. We've got blog posts, news stories, and videos up as well, as well as all the longevity products. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites or call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay, so we're talking about food, eating behavior. Later on, we're going to talk, continue talking about excitotoxins. There's nothing more important when it comes to health than to figure out why it is that we're driven, why we're compulsed to eat certain foods, and also to regard the companies that want us or induce us or hypnotize us or manipulate us through advertising techniques and through chemical manipulation of foods to eat as the enemy, which they are. McDonald's is the enemy. Nabisco is the enemy. Keebler's is the enemy. These companies that produce this kind of swill, this corporate swill, need to be regarded not as our friends, but as corporations that could care less about the health of us or our loved ones. You know the reason, if you ever look at the uh, Starbucks logo, it's a mermaid, right? You know the story of a mermaid? The mermaid was, the, uh, the mermaids were the original marketers. Mermaids uh, are based on a Greek legend or a Greek myth. They sing this beautiful song in the ocean. They're half, half fish and half woman and they're really beautiful and they sing this really pretty irresistible song with this sexy voice that's so beautiful. That it, this is the legend, the, the myth of the mermaid. Their voice is so beautiful and their song is so attractive that sailors are just obsessed and compulsed. And the sailors go to the voice and then she leads them to their death by shipwreck. In other words, the mermaid suckers her victims with a pretty song and then kills them. And guess what? Madmen, marketers, advertisers, they learn their craft from mermaids. Today, our mermaids sing catchy jingles instead of pretty songs. And instead of living in the ocean, they live in marketing and advertising agencies, and they work for drug companies and food companies and health insurance companies and hospital companies, and they sing songs to us and our kids to drive us to the ocean, to shipwreck us. To shipwreck us. And these days, we're not just, it's not just the food. It's the chemicals that are in the food. They're literally hacking into our brains. The marketer mermaids are hacking into our brains and our most fundamental drives with chemicals with caffeine, with sugar. Sometimes you can't even taste the chemicals. Sometimes the artificial flavors and the, and, and the, uh, the excitotoxins are so subtle and so insidious that you can't even taste them. Either way, the vast majority of what we eat is food that has been chemically manipulated to keep us coming for more. Just like the mermaid song is spiked with chemicals, or just like the mermaid song uh, attracts the uh, sailors to, to their ultimate demise and their ultimate death, today our foods are spiked with chemicals that we find irresistible that do the same thing. And that's why you can't just eat one potato chip. And that is what ultimately leads us to our death by eating. Most well-known of these chemicals we talked about is called MSG, monosodium glutamate, first discovered in the early 20th century by the Japanese. And the first thing they did was use it to, to make uh, soldiers' rations more palatable. Soldier food is notoriously not edible or not palatable. The Japanese figured out how to make their food delicious, their soldiers' food delicious. And pretty soon, somewhere in World War II, Americans wanted to know, the American military wanted to know why Japanese soldiers' rations were so much tastier than those of the Americans, and that's when they discovered the MSG. These days, MSG, monosodium glutamate, is manufactured in large scale and used as a flavor enhancer in soups and canned, uh, canned foods, dry mixes, sauces. Pretty much all processed foods, at least if it comes in a can or a box or some kind of package, especially meats, is going to have some MSG in it. You can actually buy MSG straight. You can buy your own MSG under the brand name Accent. 
accent flavor enhancer. It wakes up food flavor. That's what they tell you. It wakes up food flavor. Even though MSG doesn't have any of its own flavor, it wakes it up. But it doesn't really wake up the food flavor. It doesn't do anything to the food. It wakes up our brain's response to the food flavor. It's not, MSG doesn't have anything to do with the food. It has to do with our brain. It's hacking into our brain. It's corporate interests hacking into our brain. It has nothing to do with food. It wakes up our brain's response to food flavor, or actually our brain's response to the lack of food flavor. MSG is, is understandably found in a lot of Asian foods, considering it was invented in Japan or discovered in Japan. Asian food ha has a focus on this, this flavor called umami. Umami can be uh, thought of as the savory taste, along with bitter and salt and sweet and sour. It's one of the fundamental tastes, one of the five fundamental tastes. And Asian food, which tends to be a little bit on the savory side, really benefits from this umami enhancing effect of MSG. If you ever had dynamite sauce at sushi restaurants, that's a classic source of MSG. Dynamite sauce is kind of this orangey, goopy stuff that they put on top of sushi. It's a mixture of mayonnaise and chili pepper. They put it on, in Japan, they put it on pizza, they put it on omelets. But it's especially found on sushi, and if you've had a, ever had a dynamite roll at your favorite sushi restaurant, you've experienced dynamite sauce and more than likely it had MSG in it. If you've eaten your sushi sauce and said, mm, that stuff is so amazing, I can't stop eating it, pretty much the chances are good you've experienced the flavor-enhancing and simultaneously addictive power of MSG. I remember first hearing about MSG back in, when I was a kid, in the 60s, MSG first entered into the public consciousness as the source of Chinese restaurant syndrome. Chinese restaurant syndrome was, was uh, first discovered or first talked about anyway by a guy named Robert Ho. He was a physician, Dr. Robert Ho Man Kwok. In 1968, he wrote a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine claiming that he, quote, experienced a strange syndrome whenever I have eaten out in a Chinese restaurant, especially one that served northern Chinese food. The syndrome, which this is him writing here, the syndrome, which usually begins 15 to 20 minutes after I've eaten the first dish, lasts for about two hours without hangover effect. The most prominent symptoms are numbness at the back of the neck, gradually radiating to both arms and back, general weakness, and palpitations, unquote. That's all from a letter that Dr. Robert Hahn quote, wrote to the New England in Journal of Medicine. He offered up a number of theories in the letter about uh, the cause of the symptoms. He thought first it was the Chinese cooking wine, and then he thought maybe it was the high sodium content. And pretty much, within weeks anyway, of publishing the letter, the New England Journal of Medicine was bombarded with letters from readers describing their own unpleasant experiences after eating Chinese food. And, and pretty soon it was CRS, as it was called, was becoming this public meme, Chinese restaurant syndrome. By the 1970s, a number of studies that were being published in prominent journals, medical journals and the like, were theorizing that there was a direct link between the common consumption of MSG and Chinese restaurant syndrome, CRS. And pretty soon, Chinese restaurant syndrome was officially a thing. And MSG pretty soon became a poster child for the negative health consequences of eating lots of boxed food, lots of processed food, lots of canned food. And this is where the whole concept of excitotoxicity was born. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return on the bright side right after this. We are back on the bright side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. And you can also purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites as well, or call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oil, silicon, water, emulsifiers, surfactant, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Our number two day and every day on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here momentarily from... Uh, 
from MedPage today. Sleep aid tied to Parkinson's risk. A common insomnia drug may raise the risk of developing Parkinson's disease, according to a meta-analysis. Zolpidem, also known as Ambien, has been tied to Parkinson's disease. Just another reason why you want to stay off the medication unless you absolutely 100% positively need your meds. If you're having problems sleeping, you can use melatonin, you can use GABA, G-A-B-A, before you go to bed. Magnesium before you go to bed has a relaxing effect. Lithium, lithium orotate or lithium aspartate, all of which are available in health food stores, all have nice relaxing effects. I'm a big, big fan of melatonin. Melatonin is not just for sleep, by the way. Everybody knows, or a lot of folks know, that you can use melatonin to help you relax and help you go to bed and have good dreams, help you fall asleep if you have insomnia. But did you know melatonin is very important for uh, the digestive system? Melatonin is also, uh, also plays a role in skin health. Melatonin is also an anti-aging substance. And as we get older, our melatonin levels drop. Melatonin also helps balance out excess cortisol levels. Melatonin may also help balance out ex- excess estrogen levels. And melatonin is ridiculously cheap. You can get 100 3 milligram cap, uh, tablets or capsules for five bucks. Three to six milligrams a night will cost you pennies. And in addition to helping you sleep, it'll also have anti aging benefits for you as well. From California State University, Northridge. Antibiotic resistant bacteria found in produce and dairy products. That is, you'll eat your produce, you'll eat your dairy products, and you're going to be subjecting yourself to antibiotic-resistant bacteria. That is, bacteria that are resistant to uh, penicillin and Keflex and uh, all the other antibiotics they give you. In fact, even the last resort antibiotic, something called colistin, that is the bacteria, that is the antibiotic they give you uh, if, when no other antibiotics work, is now being uh, subject to this antibiotic resistance from bacteria. Bacteria mutate, they adjust, and to use antibiotics the way we've been using them, and not just using them as patients, but using them as consumers of food, is playing with fire. Yes, I know we need antibiotics, and praise God that we have antibiotics, but the overuse of antibiotics is becoming recognized more and more, almost daily, as one of the most important health disasters of the pharmaceutical age. One of the most important health disasters of, of all time, maybe. Can you imagine if you have, again, an, if, if the situation becomes so grave that we get, anti, we get bacterial, uh, bacterial infections and no antibiotics work? These days, at least the super heavy duty ones work, vancomycin and such, but pretty soon nothing's going to work. From the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry, watermelon pomegranate juice shows athletic benefits. Watermelon juice contains something called citrulline, which is like uh, an amino acid-like substance, which has been shown to reduce muscle soreness and markers of muscle damage. Of course, if you do expose yourself to too much watermelon juice, you're going to get a lot of sugar, too. So I'm not sure it's such a great idea, although I will say that watermelon and watermelon juice is quite delicious. Pomegranate juice doesn't have as much sugar in it, and pomegranate juice is becoming more and more recognized as, as a health substance in many ways not just because of the not just because of the amino acid the citrulline and, and arginine which is similar to a uh, citrulline but uh, also because of uh I said arginine, not argiline, arginine, but also because of the polyphenol content in pomegranate juice which is extremely high and pomegranate juice doesn't have as much sugar a scientific first study highlights potential cardiometabolic, that is heart benefits, of prebiotics. This is a uh, study published in the journal Gut. Prebiotics are now being shown to have important role, an important role to play when it comes to heart health. Well, surprise, surprise. We've been talking about the relationship between the intestine and the microbiome and cardiovascular health issues for years. Prebiotics, by the way, are basically fiber. That's your most important source of prebiotics. Prebiotics are substances that feed probiotics. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to to get prebiotics. Just eat fermented vegetables. That's the best way to get your prebiotics, in my opinion, because not only do you get the fiber, which is a prebiotic, but you also get the probiotics. 
If you don't want to do uh, fermented foods, just grind up your own flax seeds and chia seeds and make chia and flaxseed beverage or chia pudding. Put a little stevia and chia seed. Chia, chia seeds swell when they contact water, and the swelling effect forms a pudding. If you have some stevia and cinnamon in there, it's quite delicious. I personally mix my flaxseed with my chia seed. Flaxseed is a better source of insoluble fiber. Chia seed is a good source of soluble fiber. They're both important. They're both functional. I, so I mix chia seeds and flax seeds together, but you can use sunflower seeds seeds and, and pumpkin seeds and uh, whatever kind of seeds you happen to like and just grind them up is the most important thing so your body has it's easier for your body to access the fiber within you don't have to do that as much with chia seeds although i grind my chia seeds up all right 844-236-6010 is our number time to hit the phones let's go to robin in oklahoma good morning robin good morning ben we got cut off yesterday but that's okay okay i was going to tell you something you asked me about my inflammation uh, and I said remind, no. the, remind me and remind the listeners. I think we were talking about adrenal fatigue. Was that adrenal issues? Fatigue and very, very extremely high cortisol levels off okay. the chart. Okay. Uh, done a lot of health. I've done a lot of cleansing and everything. Healed my, trying to heal my gut, and my numbers are going down. But the one number that was, she was concerned with was the five, F-I-B-R-I-N-O-G-E-N. Okay, fibrinogen. That, she said that's stroke level. So Do you know what fibrinogen is? No. It's a, it makes fibers. It tells you right in the word. Gen, G-E-N, means it makes or genesis, produces. Fibrinogen okay. is a chemical that makes fibers. Fibers are involved in blood clotting. Fibrinogen is a blood clotting chemical, and it's a marker of inflammation. The blood, okay. will, the blood will clot when it's protecting itself. And we have an epidemic of this, by the way. So they'll use the blood clotting chemicals as a marker of protection. They don't call it protection. They call it inflammation. But I call it protection because it explains it more. We hear the word inflammation a lot. Nobody ever tells us what that is. We just hear it. It becomes gibberish. But it's important that it's not gibberish because it's a very, very fundamental concept when it comes to health. Inflammation is defense. Inflammation is protection. So fibrinogen means the blood is protecting itself from something. Now, it can protect itself, number one, the most important thing thing it's protecting itself from is stuff that's getting inside of it through through food. Now, I'm assuming you're not an IV drug user, and hopefully you're no. not smoking cigarettes and, no, or, or, no, drink, no. Okay, or drinking a lot of alcohol or taking no. drugs. No. So chances no. are it's a food issue. Now, there's also the element of, broken, of, of uh, wounding to the blood vessels. When the blood vessels get wounded, that will also trigger fibrinogen. Hang on. we got to take a break, Robin, okay? So we'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will return with more of your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Robin in Oklahoma. Are you there, Robin? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so fibrinogen is a marker of inflammation, but I call it a marker of defense because that explains much more what it is. Inflammation is just a word, but defense is logical. We understand uh, defense, and when you think about defense, the first thing we want to think about is what is the offending agent? <clears throat> Excuse me. Defense in the blood means something is getting into the blood, and if you're not an IV drug user, the chances are pretty good it's something you're eating. So look for digestive health issues. There's a major link between fibrinogen, distress chemicals in the blood, immune chemicals in the blood, and food. When we eat a food, it's supposed to get digested and broken down into its tiniest, tiniest parts. When it's not digested, <clears throat> excuse me, and broken <clears throat> and broken down into its tiniest little components, large particles or relatively large particles of food can enter into the bloodstream. This initiates an immune response. The immune response will uh, uh, can lead to a thickening of the blood. Fibrinogen is a marker of thickening of the blood. I call it dirty blood. If you ever heard me say the term dirty oh, blood, absolutely. Yeah. that's what dirty blood is. Fibrinogen is a marker of dirty blood. Now, also, when you have little breaks and little nicks inside the blood vessels, that can also trigger fibrinogen. But those, those, those nicks in the blood vessels are also related to the digestive system and also to nutritional deficiencies. So what do you do? First of okay. all, we've, we've got we've, we've to thin the blood. We've got to keep the blood moving more effectively. I'm sorry, were you going to say something? 
well, before I forget and before you move on, could the high cortisol in my system be causing that? Not only can the high cortisol be causing it, but the high cortisol can be caused by. It's like a circle. The, the, uh, the, the, the fibrinogen and the stressful condition inside the blood can trigger the secretion of cortisol, and the cortisol itself can create a sluggishness in the circulatory system. So it's a circle. They, it can, it's the cause and both the, uh, the cause of. Does that mean, or it's okay. the, it can be caused by and it's the cause of. It goes in both directions. Right. So yes, you got to lower the cortisol, but the cortisol is a marker of duress. So first thing, first things first, work on the food. That's the most important thing I can tell you. Now, oxygen will also help uh, thin the blood. There's also nutritional supplements that can help thin the blood. Essential fatty acids are very important. Vitamin E can be very helpful in this uh, regard. Uh, the ultimate niacin from longevity will have a blood vessel opening effect. Using all the digestive support nutrients, including uh, uh, probiotics, the nightly essence, fiber, the prebiotics, and then also, uh, there's one more thing I was going to tell you about uh, from the food perspective, oh, digestive enzymes. Okay. Digestive enzymes will do double duty. They'll help break down the foods more effectively, and then enzymes also have a blood thinning effect, particularly if you take them on an empty stomach, and especially a digestive enzyme called natokinase, which you'll find in the ultimate nightly essence, N-A-T-T-O. Natto, you, uh, that's great. Keep taking them yeah. if you're not. If you're, uh, hopefully you're taking them. But keep taking them if you are. Uh, use okay. the nightly essence. You can also buy extra natto kinase. You can buy it straight at a health food store, and that also has a blood thinning effect. Do your all the relaxing things we talk about. That will help. <clears throat> excuse me. Lower your cortisol. Deep breathing strategies. Hot water. And then, like I was saying at the beginning of the program, melatonin also has a relaxing effect and an anti-cortisol effect. Vitamin E and perhaps even vitamin A also have some anti-cortisol properties. Last but not least, I would be using progesterone cream. I think I told you about that yesterday. And then for the adrenal glands, strictly working on the adrenal glands, I told, we talked yesterday about a bunch of stuff. Uh, vitamin B12, iodine, pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5. Vitamin C probably is the most important of all the nutrients for the adrenal glands. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin C. Uh, and then your omega fatty acids also are important, and iodine is also important for adrenal health. Okay, okay? this is iodine. Is that, are you talking about the niacin iodine? You can use nascent iodine, yeah. I like, personally, I like iodorol the best. That's pretty okay. easy to find. But you can use nascent iodine, too. A lot of folks get benefit from that. Okay. All right, Robin, I want to get a couple more calls here, my dear. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to my good friend in Tennessee, Underwear Guy. What's up, John? Hey, Ben. Good to I'm talk to you, Underwear Guy. I'm on a great adventure. What's I'm that? Enjoying my dopamine. I'm on a great adventure. I'm enjoying my dopamine high today Love it. from making my deliveries, and I'm just really thankful that you've become my nutritional counselor. I appreciate that. Where, give us your uh, plug your website real quick for the listeners. Well, it's www.theunderwearguy.com. Do not and, forget to put in the Z, or you'll end up with young guys in spandex underwear. Okay. What's uh, what tell why? What's the deal? Why are you the underwear guy? Well, basically, it's, uh, the simple answer is is because I work out in my underwear. Everything that I do in my truck, I do inside my truck. So you don't drive your truck in your underwear. You're not in your driving uh, your truck. Well, I'm wearing underwear, but not okay. in my underwear. Okay, good. I just uh, want to be clear on that. So you know, I work out. All you have in a truck basically is a bed and maybe a two foot square area where you can stand up. So I developed a whole exercise routine. Uh, everything that I could do inside my truck so I could help other truck drivers lose weight, get exercise That's uh, awesome. while they're out here on the road. Now so, we have a lot of, we have a lot of truck truckers who are listening. So the best way to, if they want to get a hold of you, the best way is through your website. The easiest way is to go up to Facebook and just type in the underwear guy on the search. You'll see me, you know, really good looking and creepy old guy standing <laughs> next to a truck. Uh, then you just hit the little learn more button and it'll take you right over to my website. Okay, perfect. So what's going on today? How can we help you? Well, today I just wanted to ask you a little bit about some AFib strategies. You know, I, I dropped, got rid of all my blood pressure medication. I got rid of my thyroid medication. I was on a Pradaxis, a blood thinner, got rid of all that, dropped about 50 pounds. And so I've had to convert over to what I feel are natural blood thinners. Okay. Um, 
And nobody seems to really know the exact cause of AFib. It's, something it's that duress. Just... It's simple. It's very, very simple. It's duress. The heart is freaking duress. out. It's you know, The heart is supposed to pump out in, in solid, strong uh, uh, beats or strokes. AFib is when the heart becomes jittery and it does. the strokes aren't as strong. It's, it's base, Fibrillation is a really descriptive word. It's like jello. It becomes like jello. It vibrates. It doesn't have this powerful punch. It's just, it's kind of gooey. And, and, and jello like. Uh, it's caused by duress. Lack of oxygen represents a duress. Toxicity, especially sugar in the blood, represent duresses. And nutritional deficiencies represent duress. That's basically, when we talk about physiologic duress or stress, what we're talking about is the wrong things getting in and the right stuff not. In terms of AFib, you're looking at the wrong things getting in, especially sugar and digestive toxins, the right things not, oxygen and nutritional uh, micronutrients. So, a couple things right away. Slow, deep breathing is of the utmost importance for AFib. Keeping your sugar intake down is also extremely important. Use all the supplements we talk. If, you, if you're stuck on sugar, you're hooked on sugar, use the supplements we talk about to help the body process sugar. Things like uh, uh, the B vitamins, thiamine, niacin. The ultimate niacin can be very helpful. It, it turns out that all the nutrients that help you process sugar are also very important for your heart. So they all work together. Chromium, vanadium, niacin, selenium, sulfur, the B complex. Use your ultimate ultimate niacin from longevity, your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I'm sure you're already using the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Stay on oh, that. Yeah. Use, the, use the ultimate selenium if you're not already using it. Make sure you're relaxing the body as much as possible. Uh, keep your intake of sugar down and then use nutrients that help your body process sugar, including zinc. That's another one. Vitamin A is another one. And then uh, up your protein levels. Make sure you're eating more protein. You may even want to go ketogenic, actually. The ketogenic diet is wonderful for dealing with AFib. So you're looking at duress coming in from the uh, wrong stuff coming in and the right stuff not. It really is as simple as that. And any boneheaded medical professional that wants to electrocute your heart, because that's what they do for AFib, they electrocute your heart, it, it, it should be regarded as a criminal, as the enemy to ablate the heart with, by sending an electrical current through or to give you prescription drugs which chemically ablate the heart. Things like the beta blockers and the calcium channel blockers, these are awful, awful medications and that's what doctors will do. And they'll tell you, oh, there's no known cause and you're, got, you're gonna have this the rest of your life. Baloney. All the things any, we talk uh, about on this program. Yes, go ahead. Any chance that it has anything to do with a pinched nerve and yes, your, it uh, could. spinal cord? It could have inflammation in the nervous system and, the, and spinal cord could definitely be part of it, but that's more of a mechanical issue. I'm looking more biochemical and metabolic. If you have a mechanical okay. issue, you can work with that through manipulation if there's a pinched nerve, and I have heard that theory, but the way I look at it from a metabolic or chemical stamp, biochemical standpoint is it represents duress. A couple other things real quick as we're out of time here. Magnesium has a very wonderful relaxing effect on the heart. Don't forget coenzyme Q10, which is incredibly heart health, uh, heart friendly, uh, important for cardiovascular health. Interestingly, if you're on a statin drug, you will probably make less coenzyme Q10. So if you're on a statin drug, it's extra important that you get on CoQ10. John, that's all the time we have for today, my friend. Thanks for your call into our guy. Hope we helped you out. Have a beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Sorry if we left you on hold. Call back tomorrow. Tell our call screener we left, we left you on hold. We'll get you first up. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by calling 866-735-2470. And also check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular